Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you a really awesome bass reharmonization technique. It's a pretty popular one. Many great bass players use it already. And today I'm gonna to show you how it's done. This is great for bass players and this is also great for all other harmonic instruments because at the end of the day, it's just a reharmonization technique and everyone who deals with harmony can use it. And if you play saxophone and trumpet or any other melodic instrument, this will be really great for you too because believe me, the more harmony you understand, the better you're gonna improvise and the better you're gonna sound. The reason the technique I'm about to show you is particularly great for bass players is because it allows them to reharmonize chords on the fly without messing up the piano player or the guitar player or whoever's playing the chords. It basically allows the bass player to play a different bass note underneath the existing chord and reharmonize that chord while all the other chordal instruments are playing the same chord they were supposed to play. And they all look very pleased and surprised when the bass player switches the bass note underneath it and reharms the crap out of those chords without tripping anyone up along the way. So let's look at this. To demonstrate this reharmonization technique, we're going to use the most simple set of chords in the world. One, four, five, one. Nothing can be simpler than that, right? C major to F major to G major back to C major. So, okay, suppose I'm a piano player and I'm playing the chords on the gig, right? If you're a good piano player or guitar player, you know what it's like to play rootless voicings. If you're playing piano or guitar, you can't be playing the bass notes if you have a bass player, generally speaking, because you're going to get in the bass player's way. So now imagine my left hand is going to be the bass player for the rest of this video. And my right hand is going to be, you know, the piano player. So here's the bass player over here, going to play the bass notes for these chords. Pretty simple. Right? Soon enough, the bass player gets pretty tired of playing these simple chords and he asks himself, hmm, I wonder if I could play some other bass notes under these chords without interfering with the piano player. Hmm, what if I play some other note instead of C? What if I use, I don't know, an A? Instead of this, I'll play... Whoa! So you want to tell me that the piano player is still playing a C chord and I can play a C on bass or an A on bass? Wow! Okay, thinks the bass player to himself or to herself. Maybe one of those times I'm gonna play A instead of C. And I'm gonna be very tasteful about it. I'm not gonna do it all the time, I'm just gonna do it once. And then the tune starts and they start playing. Two, three, four. That sounds pretty cool. So that means whenever there's a major chord, I can play the sixth in the bass and it will still sound awesome. And it will not throw the piano player off like if I play the C sharp, for example, right? So sure, this A is not a C, but it still sounds great. And the piano player doesn't have to be informed ahead of time. The piano player can just keep playing his C chord thinking it's gonna be a C chord and I'm gonna surprise the piano player and play an A instead of the C at some point and freshen up the harmony that way. So it means instead of this, I can do this. Wow, okay. So every major chord can take a sixth instead of the root. Okay, let's see, what else can I do? So, well, that's a major chord. Right? Just like the first, that was a major chord. This is also a major chord. And I already discovered that each major chord can take a sixth instead of the root. So what's a sixth? Whoa! That's cool. It means the piano player can keep playing this. And I, the bass player, can either play the F or the sixth. And it'll still sound nice. 
Wow, that's really good to know. It means that if I'm a bass player, I can throw this left hook sometimes out of the blue here and there just to freshen everybody up and it's not gonna mess up the music because no one has to know I'm about to do this. Other people can just keep playing their regular chords and I, the bass player, will change one note and it will still sound amazing without anyone needing to prepare for it. So it means that instead of this, I can play. Wow, so they're interchangeable. Ah, interesting. So imagine the song is playing, we're going. Okay, that's nice, that's good to know. Okay, let's see, what else can be done here? That's a major. Wait, that's a major chord too. And we already agreed that any major chord can take a sixth in the bass instead of the root. Okay, so this would become this. Huh. That means the piano player can still think it's a G chord as long as he's playing rootless voicings and doesn't play the bass with his left hand because there's a bass player on the gig. So if the piano player is playing a G chord, that means the bass player, like, oh, I can play an E underneath this G. Either that or this. Okay, well, what would that sound like? Suppose we're playing a tune. Yeah, that's fresh. Awesome. And so each one of these could get a sixth instead of the root. And now it's up to the bass player to use good taste and not abuse this reharmonization technique. Use it very sparingly, very tastefully, just to sort of lift the music up maybe one time throughout the whole song. That's right, you guys. If you play bass, you use something like this maybe one time in the whole song, towards the end probably, because everyone had heard these chords so many times and towards the end of the song you throw in a reharm like this as a bass player and you substitute the root for the sixth and everybody goes whoa that's awesome because they're surprised because they can hear its new chords but at the same time they know they're not playing any new chords the piano player knows he just played the same regular chords he's just smiling because he can tell that his bass player knows harmony well that's why the bass player was able to reharmonize the song on the fly without interfering with the piano player's chords a good bass player will always play a substitution note that will for sure work with whatever he knows the piano player is already going to play for sure because remember the piano player doesn't know anything about this upcoming reharmonization the piano player is going to play the regular chords and it's up to you the bass player to use your judgment and play the kind of note as a substitution that will for sure work with what the piano player is about to play which is the regular chord so i hope you get the idea any major chord could take a sixth in the bass i can go into a deep explanation for why that is but just for practical purposes understand that any major chord can take a sixth in the bass and again use this very sparingly. If I ever play bass on a gig, I maybe will do this one time throughout a song on every other song or something. It's very corny using this kind of substitution a lot. So don't be corny, be tasteful. Play the harmony as it is, and then when the music needs a little bit of a lift, you can resort to this little technique here once. And everyone's gonna love you because you will have helped the music without having tripped anyone along the way. That's about it, you guys. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I release a lot of bread and butter videos to help you with your playing and coach everyone in the comment section one-on-one -on -one and reply to everybody, helping you guys make the most of these videos. If you enjoy reharmonization, check out this video right here where I go into great depth about one of my favorite reharmonization techniques right here. It's actually pretty spectacular.